Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Dustin Kreis and today we're going to do some early impressions um, of this game right here, Shin Megami Tensei 4 for the Nintendo 3DS. And a lot of people have been doing this and I've been watching their videos and it, it the, just the opinions, the opinions are all kind of the same in that this is a fantastic game, but um, just sort of the comments on the game have varied from this is the hardest thing I've ever played in my life to, uh, this is, you know, I just watched Aero uh, Dynamish's video where he talks about how it's uh, kind of fun and relaxing. And um, I figured, hey, why not add my voice uh, to the, the din of voices out there? Um, I'm not going to lie. When I put this thing in and um, got into the dungeon for the first time, um, I don't think I have ever reloaded a save as many times as I've had in this game. Um, when you first start out in this, it if you're not a Shin Megami Tensei, like, pro, I am very novice in this um, series. Um, I've beaten Digital Devil Saga 1, and I'm, I don't know how far into Persona 4. And that is it. So, when I started playing this game, I was frustrated beyond belief. I had an idea of the weakness and, you know, the strength system that the Shin Megami Tensei series really uses, but it really was, like TJ, TG Apuleius said, um, you have to save after every battle, because in those early stages, um, if you don't time your attack right, which when you're in the, the, du the dungeons itself, you can press the X button to swing your sword, and if you connect, you get a preemptive strike. Um, if you don't do that, it pretty much seems like the enemy always gets a preemptive strike, and then they always hit you with a weakness and just wipe you out. And I was reloading and reloading and reloading, um, because I would just get, you know, I would either get wiped out, or one of my demons would get wiped out. I didn't really have a way to revive them yet, and, like, a revival bead is so expensive, it's like, I didn't want to waste the money on wasting a revival bead. Um... So I would just reload my save because, you know, I'm saving like every couple steps and I, so I'm not to lose progress. And I was getting super frustrated to the point where I was like, I'm not going to be able to play this game. Like, I'm just, it's, it's just too frustrating. And I kind of felt that way with Digital Devil Saga 1. Um, there was points where just the battle system and the mechanics of a SMT game um, really just, it was frustrating to the point where it wasn't fun. Like, I like a good challenge, but sometimes in this early part of this game, I felt like really just, um, which I'm still really in the early parts of the game, three hours into a game is not that much, but, um, I really felt like I, this is just, this is just too frustrating to be fun. And then, uh, once I got that first quest done where you have a full party of demons, things started to, either I started to get better at the, the game, or it started to e feel easier. And I cannot describe to you um, just the uh, the sheer joy of finally getting a demon that knows the Dia spell. <laughs> and then one of the, the, the cool... Um, Duncan. Um, one of the cool um, things in this game is that the, the Whisper system, which once a demon uh, levels up to a certain point, they will sort of whisper you one of their spells. And uh, when I got the Dia spell on my main character, I was uh, that that's I have not had that sense of relief and happiness in an RPG for a long time. So, uh, yeah. Dropping things. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 is a very challenging game, and it, at first it feels like it's challenging in an unfair way, but eventually you start to understand um, the mechanics and everything that the game is doing, and um, you really feel like you're getting better at it. So the reward of playing this game is really high, and I'm actually, I really want to set and play this all day. Um, and that's a huge change from, you know, a few hours ago when I was just like, I gotta put this thing up because I'm gonna start throwing my 3DS. Um, I wanna sit and play this game all day, but because I don't have an XL, uh, looking at that little screen is making it feel like my eyes are just ripping out of my head. So, yeah, 
I am, uh, this might be the first, this might be the, the SMT game that really sways me on this series. I don't know. I'm still really early in it, but, um, it's really addicting. And, um, I didn't feel that way with Persona 4. Like, uh, I know a lot of people really love Persona 4. I'm about, I don't, I think like 20 hours into it. Maybe 15, 15 to 20, somewhere in that range. And just the way the game is set up where you have to do things on a certain day and it's just, it's not grabbing me because I'm like, I, I just want to play the game and it feels like that system is keeping me from doing what I want to do because on a Thursday, well, I would really rather do this, but I really should go hang out with these people because... <laughs> that'll raise my stat, and this is the only day I can do that. And instead of it feeling like a game, something I can play, it, it feels like real life, where it's like, well, I'd really rather do this, but I gotta go to work to earn money. And um, some people might enjoy that, but for me, you know, if I want to go into the dungeon and explore, um, that's what I want to do. I don't want to go, you know, have these conversations with these uh, soccer players to raise a, a strength score or something. It's just... It's not really grabbing me, but this is more of a, uh, not a first-person dungeon crawler, but it's a third-person dungeon crawler, and, um, you know, if I want to go into the dungeon and just grind levels, I can do that. If I want to go continue the storyline, I can do that. So, it gives me the freedom to sort of approach the game the way I want to, and I like that a lot better than Persona 4's, you know, sort of school system, which... Uh, admittedly, I need to put Persona 4 in more and play it. Um, I've kind of taken a very long break from it because it just, it was not... It, the story was kind of cool, and the gameplay is the traditional SMT weakness system, but uh, just the, the the game itself was not grabbing me. And I know there's probably people, like, ripping their hair out right now. Like, what are you talking about? Persona 4 is, like, the, one of the best games ever made. But for me, it just, it wasn't doing it. But this kind of is, so... I'm really looking forward to uh, playing more of this, but I need to go let my eyes rest. Um, the only thing I... I guess... It's one of those games where you have your main character, and then it's kind of Pokemon-esque where you acquire demons, and um, I, I sort of like Persona 4's way of doing it better, where you have a party, and they just you know pull out demons to do their attacks, and the, or I mean their spells, more so than this, where it's like you have one character... And then the rest of your party is made up with generic, um, not generic, but, you know, just, at, you know, well, generic characters in that they're just demons that you collect. Um, I hear later on in the game you get sort of traveling companions and stuff like that, but uh, I like party interactions in these games, and I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But um, I do know that this story is going to get very, very epic. Um, just looking at sort of the things that they're setting up, it's really intriguing. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I just kind of want to talk about how the game, when I first put it in, I was about ready just to take it out and not play it and just say, you know what, not for me. But I stuck it out a little bit more, and uh, I'm really starting to find something that I actually really, really enjoy in this game. And, um, yeah, it's kind of making me... Uh, you know, I'm not the type of person that just dismisses a game, you know, in the first couple hours. But it, it's, it's really reminding me that games need to... Uh, you need to experience the game yourself before you make a, a judgment on it. And um, I don't know if I'll do a first impressions of Time and... Ugh, can't talk. Time and Eternity uh, for the PS3. But that is another game that's kind of getting an unfair rap. And I know when I did my unboxing video... A lot of people was just talking about how they're not interested in it, and they're not, uh, well, that game's terrible. And it's like, well, have you played it? And I, while, you know, I don't want to turn this into a time and eternity um, impressions. I'll do one of those if you guys are interested. But um, it's it's not the greatest game in the world, but certainly not like Duke Nukem Forever. So, I you know, I don't know. Maybe, um, you know, when it gets cheaper, people give that game a fair shot. But uh, as as for where it stands right now, really enjoying Shin Megami Tensei 4. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting back to it once my eyes feel like they can handle the 3DS screen again. Um, but yeah, so that is it for this. Uh, just really looking forward to digging more into this game. But uh, that's all for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.